Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today I'm going to begin my, uh, my channel's journey through Deadlands, the second printing. Uh, this is for uh, Savage Worlds Adventure Edition and uh, I will be taking a look at uh, Chapter 1, uh, which I call it a chapter, uh, the Into the Weird West. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about what, uh, what brought me to making this video today. So uh, during my live stream uh, yesterday, um, Peter Saloum, who is someone who I met at uh, Rising Phoenix, uh, someone who I've, I've played in his game and we've had, I've interviewed him on my channel. Um, he was running a Savage World slash like Aliens uh, adventure. Um, really incredible uh, experience in playing in his game and uh so last night during his uh during my uh live stream he popped in and we started chatting in the in the comments section and he asked about you know rising phoenix and you know if i was intending on going and um i said yes i said i haven't quite decided which game systems i might be running and i said but you know I i'm planning on possibly running deadlands and you know, he seemed to be very excited about that prospect as well. And, um, you know, and so that was something that really spurred me on to uh, getting back to actually covering Deadlands because I, you know, it was about two months or so or go, uh, ago that I picked up the, uh, the Deadlands box set. Uh, and I had been covering... Uh, a, a walkthrough of the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, which I picked up several months prior to that as well. So, during the convention season of, of earlier on in 2024 and the tail end of 2023, I had been using Weird Frontiers to recreate some of Robert E. Howard's uh, Western tales or Weird West tales. <coughs> oh, excuse me but the complexity of weird frontiers which is a great game um the complexity of that system for use in a convention setting is um you know is a is a pretty monumental task let's let's put it that way and i have actually seen even though i've seen that at um i've seen that at conventions and actually it was introduced to that game system at Rising Phoenix Game Convention uh, in Massachusetts in April, I believe the prior April to that, so that would have been April of 2023, um, I've also been seeing Deadlands um, much more so. And I think it's because the system is, um, is a little bit easier to use and, and it's um, the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition is a great addition for convention play. So now I'm going to start setting up for my deeper dive into Deadlands and, uh, and my intentions for what I'm going to do with it. Um, I, was, I was suggested, was suggested to me during that live stream, uh, several different adventures that I could run that would work really well in a convention setting. Um, however, I, I prefer to lean towards writing my own adventures for use at conventions um, and, and really tailoring an adventure towards that use uh, rather than just using what, what's coming out of the box per se. And so, um, and I'm such a big fan of Robert E. Howard, which you can kind of see behind me, um, I will be converting his, uh, some of his short stories uh, into the game system of Deadlands and and Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. Uh, so I think that's the best way to showcase both the game, um, my talents as a you know as an adventure writer, I guess uh, you know, and uh, and my game mastery in a convention setting because that is something that I'm really trying to build a reputation for is is to be a uh, is to be a game master in conventions and and be 
you know, someone who can uh, bring players to my table and, and they walk away with a really positive experience uh, for both the game system that I'm running as well as the way that I'm running it. So without further ado, let's jump right into, into the Weird West. So I'm just going to go over the first section here and then I'll get into in later uh, in later videos the uh, the nuts and bolts of the game system itself. So I'm just going with uh, Into the Weird West, page five, and I will jump right into this. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this. Um, I'm just going to highlight some of the main sections of it. I don't care what trouble you think I'm mixed up in, Marshall. I ain't leaving town. First off, you ain't got no right to make me go. Them rumors of rustling down in Texas is more of a misunderstanding. And a whole, and that whole killer cade nonsense is a load of bull chips. Second, I ain't leaving civilization. Not a while. Not while it's out there. Don't give me that look. You ain't no greenhorn, and you've ridden the high plains more than once. You know there are things out there that ain't in no school book. I ain't talking about prairie ticks and tummy twisters or tumble uh, bleeds or any old haint, haint or spirit. Everyone knows those are real. I'm talking about the kind of things that you read about in the tombstone epitaph. Hell yes, I can read. I graduated the sixth grade and keep that hand away from the smoke wagon, Marshal. Don't forget, I'm faster than you. I don't wanna put you in the ground, but if you won't back down, I ain't got much choice. And, and so here you have kind of like the, the kind of setup of an, an acknowledgement of the dangers that are out there that are not um, that are not taught in school. They're not uh, they're not the normal thing. And so you're starting to see both the development of a a Western, right? Your very typical uh, Western, uh, but now with a, a darker twist to it. And, and that is how the game is really meant to, um, is really meant to run. So history is not our own. The weird West of Deadlands is much like the wild West of our own world, but with a few fantastic differences. The most notable of these is that the Civil War dragged on far longer than it did in our history. Things escalated after the great, the great quake of 1868. It sundered California into a maze of labyr labyrinthian sea canyons and exposed a new superfuel called Ghost Rock. The infernal ore screeches like a banshee when burned, powering all sorts of of newfangled gadgets and gizmos like steam wagons, auto gyros, and more. This gave rise to new weapons of war the North and South just couldn't help murdering each other with. The greatest and most terrible gathering of these deadly contraptions occurred at the epic and bloody battle of Washington in 1871, where a desperate Northern victory finally ended the long, tragic Civil War. New Nations Rise The Long War kept the governments of the North and the South preoccupied, allowing other forces to rise and grow. After the Great Quake, Reverend Ezekiel Grimm proclaimed his theocratic rule over the free and holy city of Lost Angels in 1876. His impressive black granite church offered shelter and food to thousands 
in the devastated territory before it was struck down in a titanic flood in 1880. Some claim all was not as it seemed with the reverend and that his church was actually a murderous cult. Whatever the truth was, it now lies at the bottom of the ocean with Grimm's bones. The Mormons also took advantage of the situation to claim Utah for themselves in 1866, proclaiming it an independent nation of Deseret. It wasn't just faith that powered their pre perseverance in the hostile environment, however. Dr. Darius Hellstrom, foremost inventor of the age and master of the new ghost rock powered inventions, became their patron. His railroads and factories made Deseret a powerhouse, both economically and militarily. Still reeling from the decade of carnage, the Union had no option but to accept their autonomy. The same is true for the Sioux Nations and the Coyote uh, Federation, two independent Native American states carved out of their ancestors' sacred lands. The Union eventually made peace with the Sioux, enough to keep Deadwood and Ghost Rock mining alive around the Black Hills, but the tensions are always high. The Coyote Confederation is far less unified and struggles mightily with their former Southern allies in and around the lands that used to be called Hell's Half Acre. The trouble between these hot-headed warriors and the surrounding settlers and hunters who co covet their resources threatens to boil over into full-scale war every day. The authorities. The tombstone epitaph has grown to prominence far beyond its Arizona roots. Under the guidance of editor John Klum and an incessant noise, noiseness of roving reporter Lacey O'Malley, the tabloid has gone national. It prints lurid and sensational stories of ghosts, monsters, and horrors on the high plains. Few people discuss its stories, at least not in polite company. The epitaph is a thorn in the side of the United States Agency, a shadowy government organization supposedly dedicated to rooting out troublemakers who might plunge the nation into another civil war. The epitaph, however, claims the agent's real job is to hunt down the strange creatures its lurid stories allege lurk in the shadows of every cow town from Fort Smith, Arkansas to the maze. <coughs> the epitaph also says this is why the newly formed Territorial Rangers are no longer confined to their home territories. Officially, they hunt dangerous fugitives from justice, but O'Malley says they also hunt monsters. The Explorer Society. A group called the Explorer Society has gained some notoriety for tracking and cataloging the creatures of the West, many of which have only been discovered in the last few decades, like California maze dragons and giant worms called Mojave Rattlers. Adventurous types are encouraged to look into membership, especially if they want to know how to deal with such critters should they come across them in sun-baked deserts, frigid mountains, or lonely prairies. A tour of the West. Now that you have caught up a bit with the current events as of 1884, let's take a whirlwind tour of the Weird West's major regions to find out all the grisly details. Of course, drifters have to go see the places for themselves. So you're gonna have the Great Plains. I'm gonna kind of condense this down. You have the Great Plains. You have the Morgana effect. I will read this in detail. Uh, longtime fans will notice some important changes to Deadlands caused by what we call the Mor Morgana effect. We don't want to reveal too much here where any old look, looky loo can see it, but suffice to say, a fella called 
the cackler recently did something really bad in the Tower of Devil's Tower. The tombstone epitaph, which everyone reads but no one admits to, claims the cackler's efforts changed history itself, whether you believe the hullabaloo is up to you, friend. Most citizens of the Weird West don't, and the rest figure, I, it don't matter much since what is, is what is. The marshal has the lowdown on page 114, which I'll eventually get to, but you tin horns can rest easy. There are far more immediate threats for you to worry about here in the Weird West. We have the Great Basin, we have the Great Maze, which is California's quake-ridden, um, um, uh, whatever they call cavernous, twisty reaches. Uh, the Great Northwest, the desert, and you can see some really interesting things here, um, some great art. The Sioux Nations, the Coyote Confederation, Cowboys and Zombies, so Deadlands, the Weird West, has years of history and extensive mythology to explain its supernatural events, but don't let that overwhelm you. Your game doesn't need to include any of it. You can play Deadlands as a straight Western focusing only on cowboys and zombies, mysteries, and gunfights, or good old monster hunting on the high plains. Make the game your own, Marshall. Um, so the Game Master in Deadlands, I'm assuming, is called Marshall. And then we get to Making Heroes, which I will cover uh, in the next video in this series. So going back over here, so you can see a lot of the, um, some of the changes or differences between um, between Deadlands 1 and 2. Uh, you're also going to see um, differences, if you're familiar with Weird Frontiers, the differences there as well. Um, the story is not as, um, the story of the world is not as cataclysmic as it was in Weird Frontiers. But I also just want to show you a, a glimpse of the... Um, of the Robert E. Howard stories that uh, I would I would consider using for this. So I am going to just shift over to here and yes, here we go. So here are the, some of the tales, some of the tales. It is not certainly not all of them, and I'll see if I can expand this view without it getting too too crazy. Um, Oh, it's going to be a little bit hard to manage this. So here we have the content. So Robert E. Howard's uh, Western Pulp. Um, uh, he was a pioneer of Weird West stories. All right. So just like he was the pioneer of sword and sorcery, uh, he was the pioneer of Weird West. So you have The Drums of Sunset, uh, a 1928 novelette. Uh, and you can you can actually pull up you know, versions of this. I went to this website. I will talk about it and I'll link it in the links below. Um, the Extermination of Yellow uh, Dornori, uh, The Judgment of the Desert, Showdown on Hell's Canyon, Gunman's Debt, The Devil's Joker. Now, I specifically used the adventure, The Horror from the Mound. All right, that was what I converted into the Weird Frontiers adventure that I ran at conventions. And, um, but you can see there's a ton of things that you can grab a hold of and, and just grab these stories right out. They're all public domain uh, uh, for the most part, especially the, the Robert E. Howard ones are public domain. And uh, you can certainly uh, just convert them into the game system if you wish. But there's there's just tons and tons of this stuff here. The books and all check 550 pages. And um, this is 
Um, I always forget how to come out of this thing here. This is from this book here. Uh, so you can also get those from that book as well. And let me get to shrinking this down so that I can switch back over to the beginning. Yet. So um, really excited about digging into this. I, you know, thank you, Peter, for reminding me that, you know, um, that this is be a very, very appropriate game system to use in a convention space. And, um, and I will certainly be debuting that at our Rising Phoenix Games Convention in Massachusetts. Uh, I always forget if it's called uh, Millbrook or, or, um, or Milford. Uh, I think it's Milford, Massachusetts. And, um, and that will be in April sometime. I don't know the exact dates, but it's usually the tail end of April. Um, and that's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday convention. Um, so it usually starts with a Thursday night, probably like one session or so, and then goes into, um, into Sunday where most people actually break out Sunday morning, uh, to get on home. But, uh, but we'll say it should be a great convention as it's always been. This will be my third time going. And so, uh, really excited about, uh, attending that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, Deadlands preview uh into the weird west chapter one uh so please feel free to uh, like and subscribe and to share and to comment and uh as always i look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or at a gaming convention sometime soon i've mentioned in every video the last couple of uh couple of videos my kind of schedule for uh conventions my next upcoming convention will be ShireCon, that is uh, in September, and it is uh, in Connecticut, uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. Uh, my third time going to that as well, so really excited about that. <coughs> then I'll be at uh, Page 2. Uh, page 2 is the Philadelphia Area Game Expo. Um, that will be my second year going, uh, and I've actually been invited as a special guest uh, to... Uh, to run games there and uh, and game systems there. I'm running a lot of Shadow Dark and uh, and some Gangbusters. So a nice little mix of game systems that I'm running there. And then that will be followed up with uh, Rising Phoenix Game Expo. Uh, I mean uh, games convention. Sorry, I mix them up sometimes. Uh, that will be in April sometime. I don't think the dates are announced just yet. Uh, if they are, I'll put them in the comments section. And then finally, AutoCon, which this will be AutoCon, my third AutoCon that I'll be attending. Um, that's a very local one and very small convention, but it grew, you know, it grew to about 50 or 60 people last year, which was up from like 30. So uh, it certainly grew, um, grew very well. And um, and I'd say within a couple of years, it'll probably uh, exceed the space that they're currently using. So really looking forward to going to that too. It's the most local of all of my uh, conventions. It's literally seven minutes away from me. Uh, and it's actually in my hometown. So really looking forward to that and, uh, and see what I'll be running there. I'm going to be shifting the games that I run uh, after Philadelphia uh, Area Game Expo. Uh, and, and that's because I'm trying to cycle out uh, the games I had been running for several years and bring in some new, uh, some new game systems to run as well. So in the latter portion of, uh, you know, after January, because that's already booked, uh, I might also be running at a convention uh, some Fallout RPG, which I think is uh, another uh, game system that I should uh, start showcasing out there. Uh, so it'll be Deadlands, Fallout, uh, Fallout RPG, and probably still continue running Shadow Dark to a less, lesser extent. So three game systems is going to be my maximum. And uh, I really like the fact that, you know, those three game systems that I'm looking at are fairly portable. In other words, 
It's not of a lot of extensive materials I have to bring along with me. There are starter sets uh, for both Fallout and, and uh, Deadlands. And the core of the materials that I need for Shadow Dark are, you know, um, fairly small as well. So really looking forward to it. And um, as always, thanks for stopping in. You all have a great rest of your weekend. It's a holiday weekend. It is Labor Day weekend. So uh, I hope you all enjoy your family time. And, um, you know, I might actually have to delay my game tonight um, because I do have family over that I wasn't expecting and they're staying until tomorrow afternoon. So hopefully I, I might get to my game uh, tomorrow evening. Uh, if not, we'll just postpone until next week. But um, I'm hoping to get some gaming in. Uh, this weekend. So you'll have a great one. Take care.